Hello and welcome back to Rotary Rocketry. Today we are going to continue the series of building a new PVC motor to launch our four inch rockets. Now this is part three in the series. We already have two other videos. If you want to take a look at them, the links are down in the description. But in the first video, we just did the design development and testing of a motor. In the second video, we put it into our new Eliminator Nano rocket and launched it. That brings us to today. Now with the launch, there were some issues, and specifically because this motor has an unusual burn curve, it's what's called a progressive burn curve, it doesn't have a lot of thrust at the beginning. And that was noticeable when the rocket left the rod. We need to build up some more thrust right away before the rocket leaves the launch rod. So, now we have a slightly different design for today's test. Now a couple of changes we've made. We were using inch and a quarter PVC, decided just to up that a little bit to inch and a half PVC, just to give a little bit more thrust overall for the entire motor. The other major change is this had one single fuel core, which isn't the most efficient way to pour a Bates grain or a solid fuel motor. So for today, we have three separate fuel cores. Now these have been mathematically calculated based upon the length, the outside diameter, and the core size to be the most efficient burning fuel cores, specifically called a symmetric burning fuel core. Now because we had to make them a very specific length, that means that the motor had to change length as well. So instead of having six and a half inches of fuel, we now have just under seven and a half inches of fuel. So we're a little bit bigger in diameter, we're a little bit longer. Now, this has a number 20 nozzle, and this one that we launched before had a number 20 nozzle as well. Now, we're sticking with that just for the test. This may build up too much pressure and this may explode. That's why we're testing. If we need to increase that to a 22 nozzle or even larger, we'll continue testing until we get this motor to work well. So, we are ready to load up this motor and go out and do a ground test. Now that was a really good ground test. The scale read a maximum of 129 pounds of force. And we know that scale was damaged from a motor explosion a while ago, so it's not exactly very accurate, but we're probably somewhere around 115 to 120 pounds of force. And we got a solid two thirds of a second of a burn time because of the more efficient fuel cells in there. So that's all good data. Now, because this motor is really in a good place here as far as power and burn time, you might think, well, let's just throw this in the rocket and launch it and this project would be done. But you'd be wrong. Because one of the major things we were trying to do in the development of this was make it the simplest, easiest to build motor. And having to cast the three fuel cells outside of the motor cut the liners for them, and then install it in here. It's not the simplest thing. That is the standard technique for making a Bates grain motor. Nothing unusual, but we were going for easier. So we're gonna do one more test. So what we've done, this is the exact same casing, and we went back to the idea of just pouring one solid fuel cell in here. Now, as I mentioned before, we did have an idea on how to pour the fuel all at once, but leave little gaps in between to make essentially three fuel cells, but with one pour. Unfortunately, that was a terrible failure, so we won't be doing that again. Uh, we ended up just wasting this nozzle PVC and a whole batch of fuel. But that's why we try things to see if they work, and that one did not work. So we're down to either casting three individual grains separately and then installing them into the motor or one single long grain. Now this is the motor that we used on the launch on the last video. 
It's inch and a quarter PVC, and it has one fuel cell in there that's six and a half inches long. So why do we think that we can go back to a single fuel cell? Well, there's a couple of differences in this design. Now, first of all, we have switched to the inch and a half PVC. Now, that's not going to make any change to the initial liftoff and the initial burn of the motor because that's the outside diameter of the fuel and that's not burning during the liftoff. But it will help with overall thrust and, and altitude of the rocket, hopefully. The changes that will improve this motor over the other one on launch is, first of all, it's a little bit longer of a fuel cell. This is six and a half inches, this is seven and a half inches. A little bit of a difference, not much. In all the previous motors, we've had three-eighths diameter cores in the fuel. In this one, we've switched to a half-inch core size, and that's going to make a significant amount of difference as far as how much fuel is burning as that core ignites. Also, on this motor, we did have the bottom surface of the fuel inhibited. It's just the way that the fuel gets poured in there, the bottom surface isn't allowed to burn. So we were burning the center core and the top of the fuel. We did something a little bit different in here, and we hope that we've got a little bit of an air gap between the bottom of the fuel and the top of the nozzle, which means when this ignites, we should get the center core, the top surface and the bottom surface burning. So round figures, because there's some variables going on in the equations, basically between the one that we launched and the one that we're about to ground test, the initial burn rate when it first ignites should be somewhere between 50% to 67% more fuel burning in this motor right at ignition than the one that we launched with. And hopefully, that gives us a much better lift off. It really should. Now it is quite a bit heavier, but hopefully it still has enough thrust to deal with that. The big danger of this particular one is it's going to explode on the ground test because we are still using the number 20 nozzle. We use number 20 for this, we use number 20 for our last ground test that you just saw, and number 20 here. But the math shows that this motor will build up significantly larger amount of pressure inside the casing. Now that's good because it's going to give us significantly larger thrust, but it also means good chance it's going to explode. So we can up that nozzle size if this explodes to say a 22. Um, unfortunately, because we're trying to build up more pressure, build up more thrust, if we end up having to increase that nozzle, that's going to decrease our pressure and decrease our thrust, which is the opposite of exactly what we're trying to accomplish here. So we'll see how today's test goes with this and we'll move on from there. And it's gone. Uh, what? All right, so now might be a good time to mention some safety when you're dealing with experimental rocket motors. You probably should assume if it's an experimental motor that it's always going to explode. If it doesn't, that's great, but assume that it's going to explode. Now, that was a really big explosion. The blast radius was about 200 feet in all directions around that test. We actually found a really large piece 188 feet away from the test. So be a safe distance away, use some kind of barrier. We usually have our car doors open and we're standing on the back side of those car doors with the windows in front of us as well. So try to be really safe when you're testing these because um, this is what we got is just a terrible mess of pieces from that. Now we did expect that there was a good possibility that would explode, and it did. So we made the exact same motor, number 22 nozzle. Here's the video for that. What the hell was that? So it did explode, but not really the same way because clearly we have a casing rather than bits. On that one, the end cap or the bulkhead simply blew off.
Now, we've developed PVC motors in the past and we've seen that exact same situation happen. This is just the first time it's happened to us on this particular experimental motor. And basically what happens is uh, it's just heat and pressure. The top cap has no protection inside. It's just directly exposed to that burning fuel that's just about half or three quarters of an inch below it. So it gets hot and it just explodes. Uh, it doesn't happen or tend to happen on smaller PVC motors, but when you get bigger, it tends to be a problem and we clearly have reached that point. So again, we built the exact same motor, number 22 nozzle again. Now in the cap on this one, which is clearly missing, but in the cap, we poured in a layer of anchoring cement into the cap before it was glued on. So that acts as a heat protector for the cap. Here's the video for that. What the hell just happened? So as you see, um, that one pretty much did the same thing, maybe a little bit different. It, it blew the cap completely off, uh, and it still was all in bits everywhere. It didn't blow it off in one piece. Um, but same thing. That was actually a little bit surprising because we've done the same exact thing with a previous motor that we developed a couple of years ago. Um, and putting the anchoring cement in there solved the problem. So we're thinking we're still just simply over pressurizing at this point and it just can't deal with it on the cap end. So we built another one. Not quite the exact same motor, but very similar. And we did now increase to a number 24 nozzle. That's pretty much the biggest we wanted to go on this design because each time you go up in nozzle size, you decrease the pressure and decrease the thrust. And that's really not what we're after. So um, this one, uh, I took the opportunity to make some changes that I've been wanting to make um, to simplify the design and also make it lighter. You see, we don't have the coupling in here. It's just a straight piece of PVC um, that makes it lighter. Now, even though you can't see it, I did make some changes on the nozzle end here. It took significantly less amount of anchoring cement to make that nozzle, which made it a lot lighter in weight. Now, for the ground test, we don't really care about weight, but eventually, if we launch it, we do care about weight. So the new nozzle was a lot lighter and actually a lot easier to make. So this was a nice experiment as far as a different style of construction. However, we didn't blow the bulkhead end off on this one, which blew off on the other two. We blew the nozzle end out. Here's the video for that. So, uh, that was really unexpected. With the number 24, you see we got a really long burn time on that. Um, the scale showed pretty good thrust. It was reasonable, um, probably a little bit less than what we were actually after because of the number 24 nozzle until the fuel actually really started burning and then it took off and exploded. Um, but it was really unexpected that we would blow the nozzle end off of the um, motor like that. So that was a little disappointing because I really expected that one to work. So we're going to go back to the drawing board and do a little bit more testing and experimenting and see where we want to go from here. Now we do have the opportunity at this point to go back to the inch and a quarter. This is the motor that actually launched the rocket in the last video. If we simply increase the inner core diameter from 3 eighths to half inch, we can greatly increase the amount of initial thrust that this provides. Now that'll decrease the overall thrust and the overall performance of the motor because there'll be less fuel in there, but it will get the rocket off of the launch rod faster. And that's really kind of what we're after right at the immediate moment. So that's something we're thinking about. So if you're not subscribed to the channel and you like what we're doing, don't forget, click the subscribe button. Click that little bell and get some notifications because we are coming out with a lot of new stuff. We've got a lot of new ideas, not only with this project, but a lot of projects that we've got planned for the future.
Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. That really helps our channel out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.